There seems to be a structure within the deep chasms of the internet that work to consume its lost seekers and prey. A love triangle or Hegelian dialectic of patriarchal and matriarchal antiquity to thus form the ultimate synthesis that can bring us all to the shaming furnace of Moloch, the place of where the complete soul is consumed. The World Wide Web possesses those who seek consumption via two archetypal forms of possession, if you will, and is present in the mythos of the devouring beasts found in ancient Greek tradition. The Minotaur and Medusa present the patriarch and the matriarch of archetypal expression, the projected beasts of mythos and psyche that manifest inside this traumatic repository are the expressions of the unfound and unseen which desire fulfillment that living life could not bring. The decaying empire of, let's say, the modern day projects the wishes of the young people into a fanatical fiction through the internet. Thus, there is much more than just the inverted mother who consumes her victims, but one of the inverted father and headless patriarch of Chthonic Head, the half-man, half-beast who devours his prey when they get lost inside the walkways of this digital labyrinthian confusement. For they seek in search to only get consumed by its underground energy, of the improper and radical, this beast holds nothing of wisdom that a true father, if you will, can give to his son, but only the most extreme of his inauthentic self within a labyrinth of choice and proposition which never leaves the maze nor enters back into reality. Caricatures and personas of the most misunderstood forms of life that of the most radical and inaccurate expressions of the patriarchal spirit. Therefore, the beast consumes the potential of their silent authenticity by shackling their guidance towards the opposite of what is their individual soul or anima, by teaching them the life of the inert reactionary to categorize life into labels and identities. Thus nothing but a circus of what comes from a non-initiated existence, which, through extensive unconscious maddening, searches for their quote-unquote true potential through thought via the stimuli which is penetrated into their minds, while the beast simply and silently consumes the soul into the most lowest form of material energy, to be given up, if you will, to the burning fires of Moloch and Mammon, money and shame. The radical politics of consistent identity fiction, the inverted consumer mythos through media and the simulated heroism of game are two forms of how the Minotaur guides the consumption of the youthful soul and is that which mostly attracts young lost men into this digital spectacle. The fatherless consumer who seeks for lost inspiration to then be guided to the fantasy of mind where he can only dream with false positives of truth that regard the sword of life with blunt and edgeless enthusiasm. No piercings are made to set the soul free into an authentic experience of exuberated flow. The anima, or the soul, continues to fade deeper into this labyrinth to never achieve the sunya of flow and emptiness that is so often found and talked about in the heroism of ancient Japanese mysticism. Thus, the digital matriarch is the second form of consuming beast that occupies the others who desire the lost feminine than masculine. In this instance, the projected trauma of 
desperation is placed into the matrix of the mother's womb. This is the medusa of matriarchal consumption. We can think of the snake or snakes on Medusa's head as symbolic of Uroboric incest, this all being a strictly feminine and chthonic explanation of Mother Nature's fundamental dynamic in life, the eternal round of recycled consumption, what is to become a daily routine of addicted comfort and archetypal possession for the lost and projected. But why is it that only men get turned into stone by the Gorgon Medusa. Camille Paglia in her book Sexual Personae outlines the point made by Richard Tristman who makes insights that even the staring mechanism involved in male consumption of pornography is a compulsive scrutiny or searching for the missing female penis, if you will. As it was Freud, obviously, who interpreted that only men turned to stone by Medusa's glare to, due to it being the terror of castration, felt by boys at their first glimpse of female genitalia. But we can see this in another alternative way, that the sexually frustrated stare of trying to absorb oneself into pornography is the same as that of being turned into stone by the glaring into this digital, hypersexualized desire of the feminine through the internet, the archetypal medusa of feminine shock to the body and mind, that one's creative libido and charge is given up to this replacement, this matriarchal comfort which physiologically castrates the individual while also making them placid and weak through addiction. This is the meme of what can be seen in the consumer, living only to consume and to be devoured by this physically inverted form of sexual gratification, whereby this form of matriarchal comfort is most dominant in the lost hours of internet masturbation, which in return takes away the charge of the addict, leading there to be nothing of strong positive transmutative value which could lead into a form of higher creative ability, desire, or diligency. Ultimately, I see this as two forms of corresponding life energy, in which the internet gets used as an unconscious trauma projector, which collectivizes energy through negative personal sacrifice. That the psyche projects archetypal energy into the internet from oneself to in return produce things of unknown desire, to produce the unexperienced, and that the unexperienced can never be the truly fulfilled reality. Hence for the uncontrolled radicality from both of these parties, if you will, to fall into the abyss of the unreal matrix of fantasy, to become nothing more than a product of this digital form of consumption a product of the unreal world of mind in all of its possible ways. Which lastly leads to the devouring god of Moloch, which symbolises, in my view, this unison and ideal that can be found at the peak of this trinity structure of the triangle, that which symbolises the cause and effect in one totalifying image. The history of Moloch uh, you know, goes back to ancient Semitic religious circles, but history is mixed to whether the term specifically referred to a form of sacrifice or not. This god is absorbent of the complete soul or anima, simply by seeing its reference to it being a god which is worshipped through child sacrifice. Art depicts it as a bull-headed idol with the hands of a human and a burning furnace within its deep chambers to bring its prey back to the ashes of the earth whereby all these beasts have the intent of inverting the phallic direction of purposeful spirit into something much more chthonic, whereby the creative soul that rides against nature is reabsorbed back into the underworld of the mother. Nothing new is born within her domain whereby the cycle of nature's incest 
continues. We could also see Mammon uh, as another figure which lives here the, at the pinnacle point of the triangle, the god of money and wealth, seen as one of the seven princes of hell, that the energy which the Minotaur and Medusa attracts and consumes goes straight into the pockets of technocracy and wealth through the multiple systems that have been made to capture the lost people of the land. This is the ultimate trinity of digital consumption, whereby two beastly gods act as a corresponding force of emanation, yin and yang for their higher power, which they give up unto it, to reduce the spirit into a material of lowest illusional value. The money and shame of a powerless life, where the soul is given back to the matrix from which it came. The heliocentric view of life and matter very much removes many aspects found within the age of Osiris. The reincarnated, the resurrected, the reborn masculine energy of the sun upon the feminine earth that is to renew and rise back into the sky once again. Due to this geocentric worldview, death inevitably became something of major importance in the major figures of Jesus, Odin, Osiris, Dionysus, etc. Death was seen as a devastation, an end in itself, that required resurrection to know of one's true victorious spirit. But through the heliocentric, the sun and moon never dies and is never reborn. It is in continuous, eternal existence. The internet or World Wide Web in this instance can be understood in the heliocentric sense in that which it never dies. Instead, it functions like an inverted sun, a black sun, a black hole, a force of eternal eating from which it drains from every planet and star. But as this new Aeon or Ion inevitably moves in, in the way it is sadly heading, you should have already started to see and recognise the moral shift that is occurring within our paradigm of life, and how it will make itself further known through the processes of death, how death is to be remoralised in this new Aeonic movement. For when on the cusp of a tail end shift, the drama which is to play forth will do so with a great and loud contraction. As if Sagittarius is pulling his bow, we wait silently for the shot to collapse and for the aim to be hit with a mighty thud. That there can only be so much tension until the tension is released and the direction is made clear. Death is to be seen as illusory, and the morality of man will be quested. This can be seen in the transhuman methods that are pre-planned and expected for the future through, for one example, the UK government documents such as Human Augmentation, the Dawn of a New Paradigm, which sets up a narrative of future societal potential and goals regarding brain interfaces, genetic engineering, 3D bioprinting, and so on all revolving around the idea of making technology so that it submerges into our complete consciousness like a parasitic virus or possession, that this battling archetype for power will house its final physical existence inside the confines of artificial augmentation, while giving it a utopian vision for health and human development. But of course, if a society is only seeking pleasure, comfort, and illusional utopianism through such methods and neglects the values of human felt struggle, trauma, pain, and the complete emotional spectrum of life that is lived, then you are always going to get people who would, on the majority, much rather accept digital enslavement over anything else, especially when it flatters the ignorant as leading towards a higher freedom of life through digital determination. 
When you remove and take away human struggle for success and achievement, you will get an existence which neglects the individual's own willpower to be expressed through their own volition and individualism, whose will to live or will to power will instead be non-autonomously fulfilled by this governing feminine force that is to become a whispering voice inside the head, a guiding principle of false light, maybe, a personal god, a digital muse within the mind. This would be the complete archetypal possession of the negative consuming mother, for she has stretched her spider-like claws further out from the psyche to then transverse into the physical, which would therefore be the complete possession of both mind and body.